Hey guys, how's it going? Um, it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, I have <clears throat> today, huh, excuse me, what a way to start, huh? Um, today we're going to be doing, uh, taking a look at the Chaos, Cold Steel Chaos series of blades. Um, there's obviously a common theme through it. Um, it started off with a very um, World War One trench knife theme. Um, they maintain that integrity, um, as I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, you're going to have a classic handguard, uh, skull crusher, pommel, um, and then the varying blades of different designs. So um, it, for me, what do I do with them? Um, honestly, a lot of them are just more or less, it's, it's a collector item for me. Um, it, it's something that I just really enjoy. I like having around, and every now and then I'll get bored and I'll, I'll, I'll play with them, whatever. Cut some wood, whittle some wood, do something with them. Um, but kind of excited to share them because I, I think I have all the ones that um, have actually been made. I might be missing one somewhere, but to my knowledge, they're all the same. They're all there. So um, let's uh, let's get into it, and I'll, I'll show you the blades. So I value your guys' time, you know, taking time to watch this video, so I'll make it um, informative and short. So um, kind of starting from left to right, over here we have the larger of the blades. Um, and this is actually the Cold Steel Chaos Kukri. Um, it is a legit Kukri knife. I don't know if you can see that, but that's damn near, if not an eighth of an inch thick on the back end. It is a heavy, heavy blade. Um, you can use this for anything, anything else you'd use any other Kukri for. Um, it does have, as I mentioned, the um, skull crusher, the pommel on the back here, as well as the finger guards. Um, the finger guard and this basically from here down is going to be aluminum. Um, and the blade itself, this one is not labeled. However, it's made in Taiwan and all the other blades are SK5. So I'm, I'm gonna guess 99.9% .9 this is also an SK5 blade, even though it is not labeled on the blade itself. Um, and this is going to be a common theme to all of them as well. Um, the Tang, I have never disassembled this knife. Um, the, the handle, it has two bolts or screws that I believe hold the Tang in place. Okay. Um, now, I have swung this. I have chopped into some wood just in the backyard. I have not done any hard labor with it or anything like that. Um, and I felt no issues. All of these blades that I'm about to talk about are absolutely rock solid. So um, at some point I may take it off um, as, you know, just just to see. Um, but just because of the way those screws are in there, I believe the tang's at least going to the, the, the rear of this uh, handguard here. Um, so that's just my observation. Um, moving along, we have the Bowie or Bowie knife, however you want to pronounce it. That's fine. Argue in the comments. Do not care. Um, it is a 10 inch blade, it comes down to a basic point, um, traditional point, and then again, it's very thick. Um, one thing about the Kukri, the Bowie, and then as we go further down the line, the Tonto, the, the, the spine of the knife is a really good 90 degrees. So if you were going to use this for, you know, bushcraft or, you know, fire starting, that's really kind of what I, what I think of for the spine of the knife, um, for my applications, uh, it's fully capable of doing that, okay? Um, other than that, again, you have a traditional Bowie knife, and it's thick, it's solid, it is absolutely 100% usable. This is nothing gimmicky about this. Um, and just like the Kukri, aluminum, aluminum, and then connected with the screws. So um, I do have, um, yeah, so I guess that's all I got to say. That's all I got to say about that. So, Moving on, this one I guess I have here for more reference. Um, this is obviously not a cast blade. This is just a standard K-bar. Um, this is, and I shouldn't say standard, I should say, um, this is a five and a quarter inch Tonto K-bar knife. Um, this is actually one that I've used, been overseas with me. Um, I love this knife. But for reference, just to show you the, just the immense size of these two knives, that's, that's kind of what you're looking at here. I'm going to come back to this one. Um, that is one of the newer ones. Um, and then we'll, we'll skip to the, the Tonto. Okay. So the Tonto itself, 
Um, again, I'm not going to beat the dead horse. It's got the same canner right here. However, it does have that Tonto blade. And as you can guess, just because I have a K-Bar Tonto, I am a fan of the Tonto type of blades, right? Um, again, look at just how thick that is, man. And it, it, it's 90 degrees. You can scrape with that. Um, it is a very solid knife, SK-5. Um, and all of these, just like every steel, uh, cold steel knife that I've ever had, come from the factory. Um, ready to shave. I mean, they, they really are super sharp. I've never had an issue with them showing up and then having, you know, factory dull or anything like that. Um, and for comparison to this one, the Tonto, because out of all of the cold steel ones, I think this is probably, if you're going to have a trench knife style uh, knife with you, or if you want to use it, you know, for your field knife in the army or something like that, um, just to show you kind of comparison to other um, blades. So this is the M9, the current issued knife for, or bayonet, technically, um, for the United States Army. Um, and then the cold steel blade comparison. So let's get them right even. So as you can see, similar size. Of course, the handle for the cold steel is going to be um, significantly bulkier. Um, but the blades themselves are not that far off. And then the old M7, uh, which is, in my opinion, more of a fighting knife than a uh, bayonet. But I'll let you guys argue that one out as well, too. Uh, this is the first one I had. This is what made me fall in love with this series. So this is might have been the first one they made or maybe just the first one that I had. I don't remember. Uh, but this is a three-point blade. This is, when I think of a trench knife, you know, this is what I think of. Um, it has the, you know, just like the others, it has the classic uh, hand guard, knuckle guard. Um, it has the skull crusher on it. And then on the front, it has the three blades. So... You know, the reason that this was so vicious back in the day was because it's almost, or it is, it's nearly impossible to stitch these wounds up that were um, created with this type of knife. So that is why they were they were so effective. And eventually, I believe, uh, three, three blade bayonets and knives were actually banned by the Geneva Convention because they were so nasty and they were basically did not allow people to heal. Uh, so, um, but anyways, this thing is solid. It's heavy. It is like, it feels like a railroad spike in your hand with three blades on it. It is absolutely um, a ferocious weapon out of all of them. I, I, you know, I really don't know if I'd rather get hacked with like the Bowie knife or get stabbed with this. This is, this would do some game damage. So um, anyways, moving on to the final one. Uh, this this blade's a little bit different in the sense it is two blades. All right, it's two full length blades all the way up and down the sides here, um, and I'm, I have a uh, ruler in front of me here, and it looks like it's about seven and a half inches on each side. All right, um, it's very light, and because of the two blades, it's very very thin. Um, you can see a little bit of a ridge right down the middle. Um, but other than that, it is crazy thin compared to some of the other ones. But I guess obviously with the two blades, it's, it's a different design knife, a totally different purpose, right? So I guess that makes sense. Um, but again, SK-5, um, same design, everything right here. Now the final one, the new one, the one that made me think about doing this video. This, this knife, in my opinion is the best knife that's ever existed. I'm absolutely kidding. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is a novelty knife, okay? I saw it on the, on the internet and I was like, wait, how does this even work? Um, and if you can't tell, this is how you hold it right here. So it's like a punch knife, except your knuckle guard. Yeah, so your, your knife is on the knuckle guard rather than off to the side. Um, there's also zero tang okay so you have the thin blade that the uh the dual blade like this one has um very thin it doesn't appear to go into anywhere because there is a gap um in between these two pieces 
And I, I just, I don't see anything. And even if there was, it would be nothing significant. Um, yeah, because I'm flexing it here. And it just feels like a plastic in the middle. Um, this entire piece is like the poly, the polypropylene, or whatever the heck it happens to be, the, you know, the fancy plastic that they use, which don't get me wrong, it's great. I got a couple of their spikes and then their dummy knives, things like that. However, um, it, it is not aluminum. Uh, the skull crushers are not aluminum. Uh, they actually come in the box to be screwed in. Uh, so that is uh, nothing, in my opinion, that's actually not a negative because they stay in there super tight. You really got to work to get them out. So it's not like you're hurting anything. Um, but this knife, if you ever had to use it, I may actually do it just to see it here in another video. But this thing, it, I just can't see it being durable. I really, really, really can't. So who knows? May, you know, maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out, I guess. But this is, to me, a novelty knife. But let me get the sheath for it. It does look, you would look like a madman walking into the gas station with this thing hanging off your <laughs> your belt line, right? So just like all of these. So all these, because you haven't seen them in um, the sheath, the Secure X, I don't know if I've mentioned that, they all do come with a Secure X sheath. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Secure X sheath, it's a fantastic sheath line. Um, incredibly snug like it ain't coming out of there nothing you can do to get it out um it's got tons of attachment options for you to modify um and then it's a real positive snapback as well as um putting it in and out so all right guys well hey i appreciate you stopping by um you know hopefully yeah you, you got what you needed out of it or just you got your curiosity filled so um but anyways yeah this is all the cold steel knives um and if you got any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm happy to answer anything that I do know, um, and I'll do what I can to help you out. But Google, Google's your best friend. Have a good one.